Hello everyone, I am Sanjay Gupta. I welcome you on Sanjay Gupta Tech School. In this video, I am going to discuss about asynchronous APEX interview questions and answers. So if you are preparing for interview as a fresher or experienced candidate, so I hope these questions and answers will help you. And if you want to learn the concepts in detail, so you can visit studysalesforce.com. So first question is what is asynchronous APEX? So answer can be an asynchronous process executes a task in the background. User doesn't have to wait for the task to finish. Use asynchronous APEX for callouts to external systems, operations that require higher limits, code that needs to run at a certain time. What are the benefits of asynchronous processing? So use efficiency, scalability, and higher limits. These are the some benefits which you can have if you implement asynchronous processing in your code. What are types of asynchronous processing? So we have four types, future method, batch apex, queueable apex, and schedule apex. So future method basically runs in their own thread and do not start until resources are available. So common scenarios are web service callout, batch apex. So it runs large jobs that would exceed normal processing limits. Common scenarios are data cleansing or archiving of records. Queuable apex, it is similar to future methods, but provide additional job chaining and allow more complex data types to be used. Common scenarios are performing sequential processing operations with external web services. Scheduled APEX, so schedule APEX to run at a specified time. Common scenarios are for the task that you want to run on daily or weekly basis, you can schedule the APEX code with the help of scheduled APEX. And if you want to learn each type in detail, so just visit studysalesforce.com and there you will find the resources. Governor and execution limits in asynchronous processing. So asynchronous APEX provides higher governor and execution limits. Number of SOQL is doubled from 100 to 200. Total heap size and maximum CPU time are similarly larger for asynchronous calls. As you get higher limits with async, also, those governor limits are independent of the limits in the synchronous request that are queued the async request initially. Challenges of asynchronous processing. So ensure fairness of processing and ensure fault tolerance. These two things you need to take care while implementing a synchronous process. What is future apex or future method? So future APEX runs process in a separate thread or a later time when system resources become available. Use at the rate future annotation to create future methods. In synchronous processing, all method calls are made from the same thread and no additional processing can occur until the process is complete. Whereas in future method, method runs synchron asynchronously in their own thread this unblocks users from performing other operations. It provides higher governor and ex execution limits for processing. When to use future methods? So callouts to external web services. To make callouts from a trigger, use a future or queuable method. Process that needs to be executed in a separate or their own thread. Isolating DML operations on different S object types to prevent the mixed DML operation. So these are the requirements for resolving these issues or to implement them, you can use future methods. What are the best practices while using future methods? So you need to ensure future methods execute as fast as possible. In case of web service callouts, try to bundle all callouts together from the same future methods. Uh, rather than using a separate future method for each callout. Test that a trigger enqueuing the future at the future calls is able to handle a trigger collection of 200 records. To process large number of records asynchronously, 
use batch epics instead of future method. Things to remember while using future method. So you need to use at the rate future annotation and your method must be static. Future method can only return a void type. Future method can take primitive data types, array of primitive data types, or collection of primitive data types as argument. So it won't work on S objects data type. So future methods cannot take argument objects as argument, right? So it can happen that future methods are running in different order as they are called. You cannot call a future method from a future method, nor you can invoke a trigger that calls a future method while running a future method. There is a limit of 50, 50 future calls per Apex invocation. There is an additional limit on the number of calls in a 24 hours period. So these are the things that you need to uh, remember while using future methods. What is Apex? What is batch Apex? Sorry. So batch Apex runs large Apex. Sorry. Batch Apex runs large jobs. It can process thousands or millions of records. It processes records asynchronously in batches. For data cleansing or archiving, batch Apex is probably best solution. How batch Apex works? So the execution logic of the batch class is called once for each batch of records that is being processed. Each time when a batch class is invoked, the job is placed on the Apex job queue and is executed as a discrete transaction. So advantages of batch Apex are every transaction starts with a new set of governor limit. If one batch fails to process successfully, all other successful batches, batch transactions aren't rolled back. So these are the advantages of using batch epics. So if you want to work on large number of data, so you can prefer batch epics. Which methods are used in batch epics? So batch epics class must implement the database.batchable interface and include the following three methods. First one is start, second is execute, and third one is finish. Now you should know the use of each individual method. So what is the use of start method that is available in batch Apex? So it collects the records or objects to be passed to the execute method for processing. Start is called once at the beginning of a batch Apex job. It returns a database.query locator object or an iterable that contains the records or objects passed to the job. When query locator object is used, the governor limit for the local, sorry, the total number of records retrieved by SQL queries is bypassed and up to 50 million records can be queried. Whereas with an iterable governor limit by SQL query is enforced. Next is what is the use of execute method in batch Apex? So it performs actual processing for each batch of data processed. Default batch size is 200 record, but uh, you can uh, manipulate that as well. Batches of records can execute in any order. It doesn't depend on which order they are received from the start method. It takes a reference to the database.batchable context object and a list of S object or a list of parameterized types. When using database.query locator, use the returned list. What is the use of finish method in batch Apex? So it basically executes post-processing operations, calls once after all batches are processed. So it execute once similar to start method. So execute method basically runs depending upon number of batches, whereas start and finish methods runs once. For example, sending an email process can be implemented in finish method. So this is a real example that you can use to answer this. Batch Apex best practices. So to ensure fast execution of batch jobs, minimize web service callouts time. Tune any SQL query to gather the records to execute as quickly as possible. So if you write efficient SQL, so your uh, batches will be uh, created accordingly. 
If you fetch unnecessary data, so your processing time will increase. The longer the batch job executes, the more likely other queued jobs are delayed when many jobs are in the queue. So you need to take care about this as well. Use batch apex when more than one batch of records are there. In case of one batch, you can prefer queuable apex. Minimize the number of asynchronous requests. If you are planning to invoke a batch job from a trigger, then you must be able to guarantee that the trigger won't add more bad jobs than the limit. So these are the things that you need to remember as part of best practices while you are implementing batch epics. And these can be asked in an interview as well. What is queuable epics? So superset of future methods with extra benefits, combination of future methods and batch epics, works beyond primitive arguments, called by a simple system.ngjob method. And ngjob method basically returns a job ID that can be monitored. So basically it has additional features over future method. So it depends like as per the requirement, you can prefer future method as well as you can use queuable Apex as well. So you just need to know like what is available with future method and what is with queuable Apex. So these are the benefits which is available with queuable apex so you can use non-primitive types as well you can monitor the jobs and you can chain the jobs next question important to remember while using queuable apex so the execution of a queued job counts once against the shared limit for asynchronous apex method executions you can add up to 50 jobs to the queue with system.ng jobs in a single transaction. When chaining jobs, you can add only one job from an executing job with system.ng job. No limit is enforced on the depth of chained jobs. Note, the developer edition and trial logs, the maximum stack depth for chained job is five. What is scheduled Apex? So you can run Apex classes at a specified time through scheduled Apex. You can run maintenance task on daily or weekly basis, implements schedulable interface in Apex class. So if you want to implement scheduled Apex, we need to implement this interface. How many ways are there to schedule Apex? So using the system.schedule method through Chrome expression, so this is the syntax, you need to write system.schedule. Then first parameter is the job name. Second is the cron expression that you need to create. And the, then the schedule class instance. And second way is like through UI, you can go to setup and in the quick find, you can search for Apex classes. And then you can just uh, click on the schedule Apex button. There you will be picking particular class which you want to schedule. So, these are the two ways to schedule Apex. And if you want to learn this in detail, like how we can implement it, so just visit study salesforce.com, there you will find the resources. What is cron expression? So a cron expression is basically a string of five or six fields that represents a set of times, normally as a schedule to execute some routine. So this is the example. So here you can see I have colored these uh, things. So 20, 38, 10, 2, 6, 2, 0, double 2. So 20 is representing seconds, 30 minutes, 8 hours, 10 day of month, 2 month. So 1 is for Jan accordingly. Then 6 is day of week. So 1 for Sunday and accordingly. And 2022 is year. So it is optional. So null or the range you can prefer. Things to remember while scheduling Apex. So you can only have 100 scheduled jobs at one time. While scheduling a class from a trigger, then you must guarantee that the trigger won't add more scheduled jobs than the limit. Synchronous web service callouts are not supported from scheduled Apex. Make an asynchronous callout by placing the callout in a method annotated with at the rate future callout equals to true and call this method from scheduled Apex. If scheduled Apex executes a batch job, then callouts are supported from the batch class.
So these are some interview question and answers related to asynchronous Apex. If you want to learn these concepts in detail, so you can visit study salesforce.com. I hope these question and answers will help you to prepare this topic.